Okay. No, Sharma, today we will be talking about transliteration, how to read the dead version of uh, Bhagavad Gita, any Sanskrit shloka for that matter. Mm, yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. महाहरिदेव शुक्लांबरधर विष्णु शशिवर्ण चतुर्भुज प्रसन्न वदन ध्यात श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शोकशंक गद्यपद्यूपिणी वाची नर्तयत क्षिप्र मेधाम देवी सरस्वती हरि ओम हरि ओम टुडे वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट इंटरनेशनल अल्फाबेट ऑफ सांस्कृतिक ट्रांसलेशन बाय Arimo, I think you can all. Uh, okay, the slides will be shared now. Okay. Yeah. Badri Nath sir. Yeah. See, I want to introduce Mr. Badri Nath Simha. He is a teacher of Vedanta Bharati. I would uh, request him to turn on his uh, video and then I want the children to. So, namaste to all. I hope I am audible to all of you. Namaste, sir. Namaste. Uh, so, I hope that even the presentation is visible to you. Transliteration and pronunciation guide. Yes, sir. Okay. So, let us. Uh, now dwell a little more detail basically into transliteration and to help in transliteration let us also learn a little bit more about pronunciation guide so this will all help you to probably read any shloka any shloka of sanskritam uh, in english transliterated format so before we move on to the further aspect uh, is there anybody who knows what is transliteration here among you anybody mom how uh, sorry sir how to pronounce uh, the uh, sanskrit words in english yes so that's an example actually so if you can uh, use devanagari script to write english words you can also use english words to write devanagari related uh, written scripts to pronounce the same energy and same sound so let us directly delve into the rights <laughs> yes so what is transliteration so it is a basically a process for transferring a word from alphabet in one language to another language but in the process you also ensure that you maintain the phonetic similarity so if if we write one word from let us say samskruta and write it in english and when we pronounce the english word we should listen or hear the same sound which you would have got if you had actually chanted directly in sanskrita so the focus here is on phonetic similarity you should get the same sound so it is a mapping of one system of writing into another so you can do both ways uh, so if you are, if you are able to write it in english you, or in the translated english you should be able to again generate it back in sanskrita and if you write it in sanskrita you should be able to generate it back in the translated english so there are multiple uh, ways in doing it so before we go let us understand there are three two, two more terms one is translation the other word is transcription translation involves understanding the meaning if the particular word is there in sanskrita if you translate it into english you will find a different sounding word in english but which will give the meaning similar to or identical to the word that is there in sanskrita 
so the sound that comes out of the mouth while pronouncing the translated word will be different from the sound coming out of the mouth when you are uh, chanting the original sanskrita matter where a second word that also comes into picture is transcription this transcription is basically trying to transfer one language into another uh, alphabet system where the focus is not on the sound but on a similar alphabet okay similar alphabet if you have having ja in uh, uh, sanskrita you may find a ga in english so they may match they may not match but at least they will uh, they may not match uh, in uh, in terms of phonetic similarity but they may match in terms of other purposes so let us look at what are the different types of transliteration so one that we are going to cover today in today's session is iast transliteration that is international alphabet of sanskrit transliteration this method has been basically generated to help westerners and people who do not know sanskritam to be able to read sanskrita shlokas easily so it is customized for sanskrita what does this this particular method of transliteration do it will use english alphabets in place of sanskrita alphabets and use certain additional marks to indicate how exactly we have to read those english letters so that we get a similar sound that would have come if you had used a sanskrita alphabets directly this is the most commonly used uh, method of tra transliteration and we are going to use this method in all the transliteration that we normally uh, teach so there are other transliteration methods some of them will use capitals for mahaprana some of them will use double alphabets like i i to indicate i e e to indicate e so there will be double alphabets used in some other systems here we use certain special marks along with english alphabets to uh, indicate what is the sound that requires to be produced so now let us move into the chart which gives a comparison between sanskrita letters and what is the equivalent english letter along with the diacritics okay so this is the chart so you would all all be aware that uh, the sanskrita language uh, has uh, multiple alphabets those are divided into vowels and consonants swaras and vyanjanas swaras are those sounds which are produced in the mouth without the support of the tongue the tongue does not have to uh, touch any particular point in the mouth the tongue being very free you can pronounce these sounds like ah uh, you don't need the tongue to touch a particular point in the mouth ah uh, e okay u ru so all these are uh, vowels so there are two charts two slides here for this um, so even a i o au your tongue doesn't get into contact with any part of your mouth so these are all vowels consonants are those sounds which cannot be independently produced or produced in the mouth or pronounced they have to be pronounced in support with a vowel so if you don't have the vowel you cannot support the consonant you cannot pronounce the consonants these consonants or like example ka kha ga gha if you notice in ka there is a a in kha there is a a a mahaprana okay uh, so what you will notice is in ka kha ga gha nya there is a a involved so all these are examples where we have taken k plus a k h plus a g plus a so this is some basic information with regard to what is a swara and what is a uh vyanjana this vyanjanas are again further classified into two types one is uh, vargiya vyanjana called grouped uh, consonants the other is ungrouped if you will notice in this particular chart you have classified five lines of uh, consonants in five rows and five columns together accumulating 25 numbers so you will see one classification is ka kha ga gha nya that is in the first line these are grouped basic basically because all these five items or all these five five consonants are produced in the same point in the mouth 
So that point in case of ka kha ga gha na, ka kha ga gha nya is called glottis or throat region. Kanta in Samskrita. Kantaha. Now there's a second set of group ones. Cha cha ja ja nya. This is pronounced with the tongue touching the palate, the soft palate. Okay, soft palate is the one which is just after your throat, but before your hard palate. If you just check the parts of your mouth using your tongue, at the back of your mouth, there is a soft portion. You can feel it. At the top of your mouth, there is a very hard portion. You can feel it with your tongue. So the back portion, the palate portion is called talu. The cha cha ja ja nya. It is pronounced by pressing the tongue against this palate. Third is the third series is tha ta tha da dha na. Okay, these sounds are produced at the cerebrum point. It is also called as uh, the retroflex because for this you have to flex your tongue backwards. You can all try here. Th produce th da. Na, you will notice that the tongue is folded backwards and the tongue touches the topmost part of the mouth, the cerebrum. Okay, so this is something that you can keep in mind. Then the next series, ta, tha, da, dha, na, is pronounced where the tongue comes in contact with the place right behind your teeth. Okay, almost touching upon the teeth. You can all try. Ta, tha, da, dha, na. So the teeth comes into play here or the back side of the teeth comes into picture here, especially of the upper jaw. Next series is pa, pha, ba, bha, ma. Here the sound is produced basically where you are going to join both the lips. So the sound here is coming from the lips area. So I hope all of you are able to notice these uh, classifications. I will repeat ka, kha, ga, gha, nya. Cha cha ja ja nya. Ta tha da dha na. Ta tha da dha na. Pa pha ba bha ma. If you can all try it yourself, you will notice that the first set of sounds, which are called khas, kavargas, come from the throat. The chavarga comes from the palate. The tavarga comes from the cerebrum. The Tavarga comes from just behind the teeth and the Pavarga comes right from uh, the joining of the lips. Now, this is as far as the grouped consonants are concerned. There are eight more ungrouped consonants. Ya, ra, la, va. If you notice, ya, ra, la. Okay. So, they all come at different points in the mouth. Ya will come at the point of your uh, soft uh, palate, Ra will come around the cerebrum, La will come right behind the teeth and there is a fourth one Va which comes because of a combination of lower lips touching the upper teeth. Va, you can try Va, lower lips touching the upper teeth. Va, so that is a combination. Uh, then you have uh, four more ungrouped consonants. They are Sha, sha, sa, ha. If you feel uh, like whistling, whistling, okay, you are going to use the murdham or cerebrum wala sha. So you are going to look at how you are going to produce the other sounds. Ta, tha, da, dha, na, sha. The tongue is in the same position for all of this. For ta, tha, da, dha, Na and for sha. Is it okay? So next for ta tha da dha na and you can also pro produce the same sound sa sa. So this is in the same position. The tongue is in the same position for all these alphabets. Similarly, for sha, you can look at cha cha ja ja nya sha. So these are all the sounds coming out of the palate side. The sh, sh, and sa are three different types of hissing sounds. Now, having given you a rough idea about the consonants, 
students let me give you a little more detailed idea about the vowels you have a a e e u u r r r and then a i a i o au and then you have am and you have aha so these are all the vowels that are there now without going further into the sanskrit part of it let us jump into the english transliterated versions if you are looking at the samskruta a uh, you it would be represented in the transliterated form as a if you are looking at a uh, that is a longer version long vowel in uh, english transliteration ias transliteration it would be represented by a with a bar above a with a bar above is a long vowel it is equivalent of a similarly i for e it is not a b c d e but for e the word used is i so you have to be very careful whenever you are reading a transliterated text you cannot read it like plain english here e is represented by i and e is represented by i with a bar above similarly u is u u is u with a bar above then r r with a dot below r is r with a dot below as well as a bar above so if you notice something here all the long vowels which are there in this particular chart a e r u u all the four of them have a bar above so if you see a and a a bar you should be able to differentiate between what is a shorter vowel and a longer vowel shorter vowel is called hraswa and the longer vowel is called dhirga okay when you come to ru it has only a single version it does not have a longer version that is normally used it is only as a shorter version the other vowels are a i o au these are all longer vowels always pronounced as long uh, two matras short vowels are pronounced for one duration of time and long vowels are pr pronounced for two durations of time since there is only one combination there is no a a i i o o au au there are no two combinations there are only one that is always a long here though it is long it does not come with a bar above it comes without bar so whenever you see e a i o or a u this would not come with a bar but you would have to pronounce it as if it is a long vowel so this is basic points that you need to uh, keep in mind now let me come to the other two items which are marked in blue there are two more vowels which is am aha here the m with a dot below and h with a dot below represents these two swaras which are also called as ayoga vahau okay so whenever you see this h with a dot below you have to differentiate between h with a dot below and just the plain h like in h this is a consonant h sh sh s this h has to be differentiated with this particular item which is h with a dot below ramah that ramah r a m a h the h with a dot below ramah mah that h is coming here whereas if you are going to say rama okay the m is there this is a consonant or if you are going to say ramam then you are going to say r a m a m but the last m will have a dot below ramam so this is a nasalized sound okay so this is something that you have to keep in mind now coming back here you would notice that in vowels there is a hraswa and a dhirga hraswa swaras are for one unit of time dhirga swaras are produced or spelt for two units of time 
well coming to the grouped consonants we have discussed that the first line first row comes from the throat the second line comes from the palate the third line comes from the cerebrum the fourth line comes from the teeth and fifth comes somewhere around uh, from the lips the first four involve the use of the tongue the fifth will use uh, involve the use of the lips so this is the row wise classification there is also columnar classification the columnar classification is the first and the third are alpa pranas that is they are pronounced using less aspiration less effort less energy whereas the third and the fourth uh, columns are maha pranas they are pronounced with maximum aspiration along with the chanting of that word with maximum energy maximum prana that is why it is called maha prana so ka kh ga gh it is not a case where you increase the volume it becomes a maha prana that is not the point for ka also you can increase the volume for kh also you can increase the volume or reduce so the important point for kh gh is that you produce the sound similar to ka and gh but with more energy with more aspiration so these are the second and the fourth first and this third the fifth column if you will notice has a star mark these are anunasikas okay so these are produced with a combination of glottis and the nasal cavity so you stop the glot glottis related sound and move into the nasal related area ka kh ga gha na so there is a nose coming into the picture pa pha ba bha ma so you can try all this uh, yourself you will notice that there is a nasal activities there so this is coming from two areas both from the glottis and from the nasal area this is the na palate area and the nasal this is the chavargaing fifth alphabet cerebrum and the nasal activity na teeth as well as uh, the nasal activity na only lips and nasal activity ma what is special about all this is you will see the first four in all this is represented by the english alphabet n but the first category has a dot on the top the second category has a wavy line on the top which is referred to as tilde in english the third category has a dot below it the fourth category does not have any diacritic marks so the dot above the wavy line above the dot below or if you look at the uh, sh there is a uh, there is an apostrophe or above that it is called acute in english so these symbols are added along with uh, the regular english words uh, alphabets and it will be equivalent of a different um, alphabet equivalent of sanskrita it will produce a different sound so the na is different from na it is different from nya it is different from nya okay so these are all different sounds i will i'll give you the correct uh, version of this now you will also see the ta tha da dha na is similar to ta tha da dha na except that there is a dot below the first alphabets for all this so english wise both look the same but the moment you add a diacritic mark in form of a dot below it becomes a different sound altogether as far as the transliteration is concerned similarly if you look at english ca you may pronounce it as k whereas we pronounce ka as k ca for us becomes ch 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 j j ny the ch and ch here it's not ka and kh okay it is ch and ch this you have to notice so whenever you see a c in the transliterated version you should go for ch and not for k okay so this is a brief introduction about the uh, equivalent alphabets that you need to look at in a transliteration transliterated text to find out this particular uh, sanskrita sound um 
Rama madam, can I go to the last slide where we have a sample? Kayana Vacha? Yeah, then uh, can you explain the difference between Sha, 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 the uh, diacritic marks? Yes, I will explain that. Uh, just I'll go, to, go back to the last slides, share the sample, how it is done, and I'll come back to this slide again. Okay. Okay. So now we have this uh, slide here where on the top you can see the Samskrita uh, Devanagari script. At the bottom you can see the Roman English script but with the diacritic marks. So to understand Ka Ye Na, that is here it is in Samskrita. Here you will say Ka because it is Ka, it is the Dhirga here Ka Ye Na. You will see it K plus A with the bar above Ka. A. A is here. Okay. A always is a long vowel. Ka ye na vacha. So ka ye na. Ka ye na. You can read the similar sounds. Vacha. Here both are long vowels. Va and cha. Here you will see it as V with the A bar above and C with the A bar above. But it is cha. It is not ka. Not va ka. It is vacha. So you have to get used to this transliteration equivalence and once you are capable of that, you don't actually need to be able to read Samskruta to read shlokas. You can take the Samskruta shloka, put it in one of the online tools, it will give you the end result in the form of the English text and you can read this very easily. Okay. So is there any volunteer who can help me today? You mean uh, uh, for what? Yeah. Uh, to try this out. Sharab, you can Shara? try this. Uh, yes, sir. What do you You can start reading the first line in English as if you are reading plain English, not as transliteration, but as if you are reading plain English. Can you do that for me? Uh, I'll try, sir. I've got yeah, quite good. But I'll try. Yeah, please try. Kai. Uh, Kayena Vaka Manasem. Sorry, sir, I can't. I got too used to it. Ah. Second, okay, I... you try the second line, first two words. Ah, okay, sir. Karami Yed Yet. Okay. It will be Yed Yet, no? If you are looking at English, Yed Yet. Yes, sir. You, normally, if you look at it as a plain, plain English, Karomi is fine. You will, you will pronounce the second letter as idiot or something equivalent. Okay, that's fine. So now, if you look at the first sentence again, uh, do you know how to chant Samskruta shlokas? Can you read Samskruta or do you know <coughs> Devan script? Uh, sir, I know how to read both Sanskrita and transliteration. Okay, that's fantastic. So can then you can you try this some English uh, equivalent? The transliteration version. Can you read? Okay, sir. Kaina vacha manasin deva buddhyatmanava prakriteshu bhavat karomi adyat sakalam parasme nara yanayati samar parami nara yanayati samar payami. So it will give you a guide where you have to elongate the vowel, where you need not elongate the vowel, and for certain uh, vowels. There won't be any bar on the top of them, even though they are long vowels. So this is just a sample. So if you know English, you can also, with the help of these diacritic marks, uh, read some Sutta Shlokas. So I'm coming back to the, my slide. Now, if you look at, the, there are three types of Sa here in the last column and the ungrouped consonants. S-A, S-A, S-A in all the three cases. In the first case, you will see a, a apostrophe above the S which is called as an akut. Uh, you, in the second case, you will find a dot below S yes, and in the last case, it has no diacritic marks. If it does not have any diacritic marks, it is equivalent of sir. If it has a dot below, it is the shenmuka shakara, where the one you do as if you are visualing, shenmuka. So the first one with the bar above is shankara shakara. It is sh. Okay. So you, you can remember these three uh, items. Now, 
having told you this much are there any queries with regard to these aspects right now do you have any queries anybody any any question any any clarification okay so hoping that uh, you're comfortable with this it'll take time for you to understand and read this but yes you will be able to do it on your own so next let us go on to what is called as pronunciation guide okay yeah i have to repeat the na version okay i'll go back to the na version there's a query in the chat ka kha ga gha nya that is n with a dot above nya cha cha ja ja nya that is a n with the wavy line above that is called tilde ta tha da dha na na is the n with a dot below ta tha da dha na na is the one where there is no diacritic mark it is pronounced right where the tongue touches the upper teeth back side of the upper teeth ma is a different alphabet uh, different uh, consonant it does not have any diacritic mark but the moment m has a dot below it would become a vowel um okay it becomes a num are there any other queries anything on the chat you can ask or you can directly address the question unmuting yourself okay so now let us move to the pronunciation guide this is basically a guide given to people who know english words and who are not at comfortable with uh, samskruta sounds what exactly you are expected to produce one more question must be there yeah thank you narin okay so basically you will look at certain english words and you will look at portion of that english word and see what is the sound that your mouth is producing at that particular position and that sound you have to replace wherever it is required for you to get the right pronunciation in samskrutam so basically when we are i'm going to take you to the example and i'm coming back to this slide if you notice we have given a chart here in samskruta there is a okay in iast also it is not a but it is a so we are going to write a but we have to pronounce it as a how do we get that a sound you can look at these four words here bat america sun fun so let us take the last word fun f u n while spelling you will make it u you will not make it fun you will say fun f a n a that a sound is the one that is getting captured here so if you want to know how to pronounce a, a you can look at sun s o n s a n a sun a that a sound is coming here so that is exactly what we mean by the pronunciation guide so i'm going back to this uh, description here so whenever you look at this pronunciation guide you are supposed to be looking at that particular letter which has been highlighted try to catch what sound your mouth is producing when you come to that particular alphabet which has been highlighted okay what sound your mouth is generating what is the length of the sound is it for one beat or two beats one matra or two matra what is the stress given to the sound what is the amount of air exhaled from your mouth what is the position of your tongue in the mouth is it stretched out is it is it uh, folded inwards in a retroflex manner what is the position of your lips is it open is it touching each other or is the lips touching teeth what is happening with your lips and importantly what is the point of contact of your tongue or lips with dip different parts of the mouth is the tongue touching the back of the teeth or the top of the mouth or the back of the mouth and finally nasalization what is your nose doing what is the sound generated out of your nasal cavity so these are the various aspects you need to consider having considered them you can look at this so i have just given an example of the first one let us look at the second one we don't say father we say father so the a here is a it is coming as a long vowel a represented by ye bar in iast translation translation var we don't say var 
like fun we don't say var we say var a barn a master we don't say master we say master a so the sound that is highlighted here the alphabet that is highlighted in these words produce almost an equivalent we will not say that it is an exact sound that we want in sanskrita but it is very close to the sounds that is produced in sanskrita so let us look at e it is represented by i in my transliteration so let us look at sit it bit if e it all has the sound e the highlighted letters have the sound e so that is what we are looking at when we look at english transliteration that sound is what you need to produce e that is represented by i with a bar above seek wheat liter feel so you are saying e that's a long vowel next u it is represented by u if you look at these words put foot wool full u u u is the sound there u so next we go to u it is represented by u with the bar above like in tool pool dude boot u is the sound that is coming next ru ru is represented by r with a dot below uh, you can look at the word rhythm r rhythm r rhythm so that ru is the one that you need to focus on ru that is r with a bar above and a dot below so there are two diacritic marks for this particular alphabets like in kangaroo kangaroo ru so that is the almost closest that we can find this is the best example we could find so let us go to the next set of uh, uh, alphabets ru that is represented by with l with a dot below like in jewelry cavalry ri ru that is the sound that you need to produce next ye ye is always a long vowel it does not have a bar above but doesn't mean it is a short vowel it is always a long vowel ha so an example is bail it is not ba le it is bail okay bail be a that sound is the one that we are looking for here play a a play a a that's me a that's the sound that we are looking for here okay uh, next so next we look at next vowel uh, i as in l guide my the y here it will sound like i my i my i so it's a long vowel it has to be pronounced a little longer i okay next au like in cow loud au au sound is there that is the one we are looking at in a longer format au and oh i missed o o o it's a long vowel you can look at co to go but a little longer o is it fine so next we'll look at uh, am am is uh, represented with a m with a dot below as in yam gam rim so your all the sounds are ending with the makara next aha like in aha uta so you won't get a very precisely equivalent english words very difficult to find we have found a slightly uh, uh, compatible or slightly similar sounding uh, english words the last part where the h is ending in a uh, uh, abrupt manner uta you don't say uta ha you say uta that ha is aha that is the equivalent one now let us look at the consonants ka is represented by ka in iast format like in the sound bike skate the ka ka that is there that's the sound that you are looking at ka is represented by k h a so one interesting point about the consonants is all the alternate uh, ones which are marked in green are having a h in between wherever you see a consonant k followed by a h and followed by any uh, vowel either a i e o anything that h will indicate that it is a mahaprana 
so you have to produce more energy and more aspiration at that point of time it is also called as aspirated consonants okay so let us look at this word black head as one word if you break it into black and head it will sound different but if you conjoin them and read it together in one flow black head the k portion portion will almost come there it is not exact equivalent but it is still uh, somewhere close by next g it is represented by g a like in garment gate get okay the g g g that that is the one we are looking at in this position for g the mahaprana you will find a h added to the normal g it will sound like ghastly ghost the go that portion will become prominent next this is the uh, fifth al fifth alphabet of the kavarga ka kha ga ga nya that is as in king sing uncle uncle sing mm. that that sound is the nearest sound that we can tell you for this particular alphabet so if you are unable to pronounce this sound there are two ways to do it one you can try with ka kha ga ga nya you have to ensure that your tongue stays in the very same position for all five of them you can all try it the final sound you get when you try to say na with the tongue in the same position as ka kha ga ga nya that is the sound you are going to get or equivalently you can look from the pronunciation guide king sing uncle ang ang mm that that is the sound that is expected to produce here next let us look at the next five cha is ca it is not ka it is cha like in chap chunk chain but it is represented in transliteration on transliteration as only a ca not cha as in english if you see english plain english it is ch 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 the sound that you are going to generate here is chap chunk chain ch ch but it's going to be represented in english transliteration as ca now the mahaprana version of it has a h in between ch uh, this is a almost uh, not exact match but a very uh, light match or a remote match that is why we would put a asterisk there like in which match the ch is stressed there next is j j a like as in jar jump j with a h in between j and a j as in jhansi we may not have any english words for them next the fifth alphabet if you look at it ch ch j j ny the tongue position for all the five is the same so that is how you can come and locate the fifth particular alphabet of this particular series varga the english equivalent way of finding it is as the in the word onion n onion bunch ingenious french in that that sound will be the ones which are very close to this particular samskruta equivalent but when you look at it in the transliteration form it is n with a wavy bar above okay this is the important point that you have to keep in mind let us now move on to the next few uh, examples ta tha da dha na all these have a dot below in english transliteration ta with a dot below where the first alphabet is having the dot t h a with a t having a dot below d a d h a n a now for the t a t the equivalent is the sound produced in these english words wherever the highlighted portion is there stay t t t t not not t ten t that t part is the one that you are going to pick up for replacing with this sound whenever you are finding it difficult to pronounce next the mahaprana th th is having a h in between with uh, when compared to the the alpa prana ta if you chant this word together ant hill ant till till th that sound is the one that you are going to uh, have to achieve if you want to pronounce this particular sound next d as in dark den duck etc you are going to get that d sound that is the one that is pronounced here it is not the d a the like in uh, normal uh, pronunciations you have to be careful there is a dot below 
ಡ ಈಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ದ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಾಣ ರೆಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಅ ಹೆಚ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಡಿ ಹೆಚ್ ಡಿ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಡಿ ವಿತ್ ದ ಡಾಟ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ಅಡ್ಹೆಸಿವ್ ಅಡ್ಹಿಯರ್ ಢ ಢಿ ಢಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಸೌಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಯುರ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇಯರ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನ ನ ಈಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಟಂಗ್ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಟು ವಾಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟ ಟ ಡ ನ ದ ಟಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ ದ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಅನುಸ್ವಾರ ಸೌಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇಶ್ ನ ಆಸ್ ಇನ್ ಜಂಟಲ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಟಂಡರ್ ಓಕೆ ಥಂಡರ್ ನ ಪೋರ್ಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೋಕಾಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ನ ಅಂಡ್ ನ the yen with the dot below is the one which is coming in the tavarga series ta tha da dha na the tongue is folded inwards in a retroflex manner and touching at the top of your mouth which is called cerebrum okay next series is ta tha da dha na here the all the five uh, sounds are produced where the tongue is touching right below right behind the upper teeth so you can try that out they are used using the same alphabets t a t h a d a d h a and n a but they don't have a dot below that is the differentiating factor between these two if you are looking at examples for t a as in bath path 3 t t is the sound here t represented by t a don't take it as t okay it is t bath path 3 now the mahaprana equivalent of that is th represented by t h a as in pathetic patho pathology there is a little more stress on the th but it is not a very close match but a remote match but you can still try it out next the is like in that those this that sound the th sound that comes in that this those the that those the that the has to be pronounced here differentiated from dart den duck which is a different sound it is with the tongue folded inwards and touching the top of the roof you are produ- producing these sounds whereas the is produced or those is produced with the tongue right behind your upper teeth next the mahaprana version has a h in between after d it is equivalent of uh, it does not have any equivalent as far as english words are concerned maybe you can try breathe 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 dharma gandhi so there's a mahaprana coming in picture the last of them is na with the tongue right behind behind your upper teeth as in nine numb pin n numb n numb nine n that is a sound that you are going to produce so this will all help you as a pronunciation guide okay so whenever you are finding it as challenging to chant any particular transliteration guide for example d with a dot and a, a how do you pronounce this sound you can focus on the d of dart here d of den here and d of duck here and see what is the sound you produce you need to produce a similar or identical sound so next next is move to the next part pa pha ba bha ma pa as in pi spin pha is the equivalent of mahaprana as in photo phantom so here we would tend to do it as f uh phantom photo so you have to be a little more careful we don't have a exact equivalents but we have a near equivalent b a b as in butter bin that b you need to look at for mahaprana bh you can look at the word abhor okay bho bho bh that is a sound that needs to be produced like in bharat ma is as in mass much mother ma 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 that is a sound that needs to be produced so this is all about the uh, identical or similar sounds in english for as far as the grouped consonants are concerned let us look at the ungrouped consonants now ya is uh, y a very easy to pick up as in yard young r is r a without any diacritic marks you have to make a note of this rule drama ra ra that is the equivalent sound l is also e- easy l a lawn luck don't confuse it with l with the tongue folded inside this is la with the tongue stretched out to the base of their upper teeth va ways water let us now come to the next four the first one is 
ಶಂಕರ ಶಕಾರ ಶ ವಿತ್ ಎಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಕ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆನ್ ಟಾಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಕ್ಯೂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಅಪಾಸ್ಟ್ರಫಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರೋಕ್ ದ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೌಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಮೇ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಶಾಲ್ ಶೋ ಶ ಶ ಶೋ ಶ ಶ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸೌಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಡಾಟ್ ಬಿಲೋ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಷಣ್ಮುಖ ಶಕಾರ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಮಚ್ ಮೋರ್ ವಿಸಿಲಿಂಗ್ ಸೌಂಡ್ ದ ಟಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಅಪ್ಪರ್ ಪ್ಯಾಲೆಟ್ ಕ್ಷಟ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಶೀಟ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟು ಶಾಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಶಟ್ ಶಾಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಶಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ದೇಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಲೈಟ್ ಡಿಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ರಿಕ್ಷಾ ರಿಕ್ಷಾ ಸೊ ದೇಸ್ ಅ ಮಚ್ ಮೋರ್ ವಿಜಿಲಿಂಗ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಮೇ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಈಕ್ವಲೆಂಟ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಫೌಂಡ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ಲಿ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಾ ದಿಸ್ ಸಾ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎನಿ ಡಯಾಕ್ರಿಟಿಕ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಇನ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಸೋಪ್ ಸನ್ ಸರ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಹಿಸಿಂಗ್ ಸೌಂಡ್ ವೇರ್ ದ ಟಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಟಚಿಂಗ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಅಪ್ಪರ್ ಟೀತ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಹ ಆಸ್ ಇನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಹಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಈಸಿ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಟು ಕ್ಯಾಚ್ ಸೊ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಬೋತ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೊನೌನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಗೈಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲಿಟರೇಷನ್ ಈಕ್ವಲೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಕ್ಸರ್ಸೈಸಸ್ ರಮಾ ಮೇಡಮ್ ವಿಲ್ ಟೆಲ್ ಯು ಮೋರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಟ್ hari om almost uh, all you have uh, covered the only thing is few letters that is with a dot below m with a dot below n with a dot below you have to be very careful and then h with a dot below s also with uh, especially the letters with diacritic marks that is very important can you share that uh, uh, vowels and consonants slide please yeah this one so if you can see there are uh, many uh, letters with diacritic marks one below then one above only uh, those marks you have to be very uh, careful about them I think otherwise all other aspects have been covered and as you see these are all the sthana ni places of articulation that you have to pronounce yourself and experience then only you will be able to make the difference make out the difference between n with a four uh, i mean three uh, diacritic marks otherwise uh, yeah so you have to listen to this repeatedly and then only you can read the sanskrit shlokas so think uh, any doubts you have to listen to it uh, again and again then only you will know whether you understood or what Atish Jain has a question. You can ask your question. Sir, in the, like for um, sir, while uh, in the transliterated version, like yes. in the slow cast, if you are, the um, if you are pronouncing it as like no, so will the, while writing, will it be no itself or no? Okay, I'll show you the last slide. You will get an answer there itself. Okay. You look at, uh, ಮನಸೇಂದ್ರಿಯೈರ್ವ ಯು ಲುಕ್ ಆಟ್ ದಿ ಎಂ ದೇರ್ ಎಂ ವಿತ್ ದ ಡಾಟ್ ಬಿಲೋ ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಎಸ್ ಎಂ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬಟ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಲುಕ್ ಆಟ್ ಹೌ ಯು ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊನೌನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊನೌನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಮನಸೇನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮನಸೇನ್ ಬಟ್ ಮನಸೇಂದ್ರಿಯೈರ್ವ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರಾಂಗ್ ಎಂ ಎನ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಡಾಟ್ ಬಿಲೋ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಆಫ್ ತ ವರ್ಗ that's what we are getting if you have some uh, uh, kishora sudha shlokas one second ma'am one second yeah here if you look at the samskruta equivalent it is also shown as a uh, anuswara 
so the english yeah. translation talks manasendriyerva manasendriyerva no 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 sir it is wrong so both are wrong then both yes, sanskrit yes. and yes. english are wrong so yes. because we have taken this particular shloka from the internet with this particular uh, spelling in sanskrit it has produced an equivalent of it so this yeah. this is an example that i can give you for the time being uh, both the things are wrong as far as sanskrit and english are concerned in this particular shloka but if at all you would find a similar scenario you will see a dot for example sakalam this is a m dot sakalam yes sir ha huh. but if the sakalam were to be followed by some some other word which is in kavarga or chavarga tavarga tavarga it will still be shown as m with a dot below but you will accordingly change your pronunciation depending upon the scenario uh, no no it is not like that if it is a m dot below it will be followed by uh, pa uh, pa tha ba bha only four of them if it is a fifth of uh, ka kha ga ganga it is n with a dot above okay no yeah that's how no, it is like the sanskrit text madam if sanskrit text sakalam is written in this format it will also have sakalam here in sanskrit since we are not going to change uh, to sakala followed by uh, anunasika no no that's a different rule sir not there Rule. But as far as the representation, no. Let me explain. Anunasika, if it is followed by that varga, kavarga, if it is, then the uh, thing you are going to see is n with a dot below for four of the uh, vargas. N with a dot above, n with a tilde, and then n with a dot below and without any any mark. Okay, then it is called the fifth. Okay. Then M with a dot below is for pa varga pa pa ba ba. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, that's how it is. And maybe we will share one or two slides. I uh, mean, shlokas from what we learned in uh, Kishore Sudha uh, shlokas. Yes, ma'am. I'll share. Yeah, we'll try to share and show it to them. then you know in the shloka vakra tunda there you will see n with a dot below tunda if you how do you write in sanskrit half nakara vakra tunda see and then which is the other shloka go through the all the quickly can you move the previous one vishnu vishnu it's okay si suprabhatam madaryanam not even that sarvesham and we have to look for that and particular thing and maybe in the next class i'll explain no i don't think that we have anything like that anyway we will uh, uh, research and uh, share it with you Hmm. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. We we can look at other. Any any other queries are there? We can address them. Yeah. See here in this Pankaja Nabhaya. Yes, ma'am. Pankaja. See, you can see that n with a dot on top. that is the fifth of ka varga panka you know that uh, actually it is written as pa with a dot on top anuswara pam 
k then it becomes panka mati did you get it yes ma'am see it is written as p p with a dot on top that is pam am you know like that pam and then k then the in place of anuswara you should get the fifth of ka uh, varga that is what okay. it is pankaja okay i hope uh, you are uh, it is uh, clear in this yes okay. yes sir yes sir okay so fourth line is there fourth line is there a mistake ma'am in pankaja indre no there is no mistake is pankajam gre yeah even there you know like shankara you write and then ganga there and all you will see n with a dot below correct yeah ganga shankara should we have a should we have a had a n with a dot above for this as well in the last line Yes, that should have got the end with the yes. We'll see that. We'll check. That, yeah, yeah. We have to check that. Okay. okay. I think it's time up. Shara, any questions? Aloki. No, ma'am. Yeah, we have to work out on this. Then we'll see oh, in the next class. Okay, ma'am. ओके श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम तत्सत हरि ओम मदर मैम शुभ रात्रि शुभ रात्रि हरि ओम मैम शुभ रात्रि शुभ रात्रि धन्यवाद मैम शुभ रात्रि सर्वेभ्यो थैंक यू सर बद्रीनाथ सर थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर द अपॉर्चुनिटी मैम थैंक यू सो मच